Welcome to this week's End of Days Update, coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. We had such a great time at Highland Church there in Atlanta. Man, good crowds, people hungry about the coming of the Lord. If you're anywhere near Tulsa, Oklahoma, this next Wednesday, the 6th of November, we'll be preaching in our, our, our home church. It'll be so nice to get to be there, be with family. Come by if you can, Tulsa, Oklahoma, November 6th. So we're coming to you every week to look at the different things that point to the coming of the Lord. And, you know, the rapture's signless, but the second coming has tons of signs. Our book, I think it's 79 or 80. While they were publishing it, the publisher said, uh, they were fact-checking it, said, this is all true. I'm like, yeah, exactly, I didn't make this stuff up. So uh, the, the rapture, though, happens just after the Ezekiel, just before the Ezekiel 38 war, because God deals with Israel like in Old Testament days. During the church age, it's a dispensation of grace, and God doesn't really do things like that. But the second the church is taken off the earth, He intervenes for Israel so that the heathen may see that He's God. So it's more of an out, outgoing thing during that tribulation time. So... But you see all the things for that, that war setting up. And I know we talk about it every week, but it's so blatant. You have all the players for that war getting closer and closer knit with all their ties they're doing. Most of their contracts with each other are all over either oil or money or uh, uh, armaments. I mean, it's amazing that Iran is providing uh, drones for Russia. And Russia is such a huge nation. So a lot's going on with that right now. So we, we pick up with what's been happening in Israel this last week. I mean, you... you uh, you see so much happening, and you find out why the Lord, when he went into the madman of Gadara, uh, the demons spoke out, have you come to torment us before the time? So they knew that Jesus was on a schedule, but he was just early. So if demons can know the schedule, how much more the church? And you have everything happening around Israel right now. I mean, you had, you had the water libation this last week on the Temple Mount, and that's even after uh, the Ark of the Covenant got brought to Shiloh. I mean, they used uh, all this wood, acacia wood from uh, Egypt, solid gold on top of it. I think it was about several, uh, three tons. So it's a huge deal. So when those things are happening like that, and then there are a few things happening on the Temple Mount that normally would get arrested and they are let, uh, the police are letting them do it. So all of these things are pushing for the next temple to be built uh, because everything else besides that is happening that shows us that the Lord's about to come back. So it's pretty radical. I probably, you need to look at what's happening with Israel. While Israel's trying to get a ceasefire, Hamas and Hezbollah have turned down the ceasefire every single time in the last couple of weeks. Uh, intriguing that they, they don't want a ceasefire. But uh, while Israel went and hit Iran this last week, and we'll get into a little bit more of that, uh, you had Hezbollah and Hamas firing rockets the entire time. It never slowed down. You have Hezbollah firing precision guiding missiles, precision guided missiles this last week, first time since the war be broke out. So that's kind of a deal breaker. But man, you had Israel go into uh, Syria this last week, hit, hit Damascus. They, uh, satellite images show they, they took out a huge mi missile depot, took out a couple other buildings. I mean, it's very similar to what happened with uh, Iran. Uh, the satellite image came out with Iran. Man, they hit a huge missile factory, and right beside it, they took out their space program building. So uh, it's coming out more and more this week how much uh, and, and how effective Israel was there in Iran, and same thing with Damascus. Now, I said both of those at the beginning here because it's so intriguing that uh, it's pretty bizarre that the missile defense system that's used by Syria and by Iran are all from Russia. So, so Israel showed how hard it was to defeat that, no problem at all. In fact, what happened was uh, they did a radar jamming thing and the Iranian uh, radar defense systems didn't work at all while Ira Israel's planes came in without any kind of shots fired at them whatsoever. So they're telling Iran, we can basically do whatever we want to do when we want to do it. And Iran still comes off real bold. Even this week, Israeli Defense Forces is talking about Iran retaliating from that. And, you know, going back and forth like this doesn't work, so Israel's going to have to do something a little crazy. And a lot of the Israelis are mad that Israel didn't take out their nuclear sites. I think Israel's trying to have a little bit more of world opinion, which they can't do that because everything they do, you got authors at colleges saying they're not going to ever read any more books from Israel. That's how crazy they are. When Israel's defending itself, you had Gutierrez from the UN condemn uh, one of the one of the 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 ones that, of the Hamas guys that kidnapped someone, like condemn that. When of course Israel's going to retaliate. How insane is that? Not to fight back. But you have a lot going on. You have uh, you got an asteroid that hit uh, actually parts of an asteroid just hit a thousand miles west of California. You had 24 earthquakes around the Southern California this last week in one week period of time. You got heavy rain in Spain. You got flooding in Saudi Arabia where Mecca is. A lot going on in the earth that are just, just one thing after another leading up to just craziness. 
I, I look at what happened with Iran and, and what happened with Israel and how easy it was for Israel to do that. But it's, uh, you have other kind of terrorist activities happen where guys are driving trucks into people, people are shooting people, people are cutting people's faces in Brooklyn. I mean, it's an undercurrent of the underworld, and you're seeing uh, the, the, the spirit world come out and in manifestation against the Jews. Because Satan can't wipe Israel out, so he tries to just hurt Israel as much as he can to freak God out. But boy, there's uh, one thing after another happening that I looked, at, I looked at this last week and I thought, okay, that's absolutely crazy. Jesus is just about to come. Because the Ezekiel 38 players are right there. We talked about China last week, how they've been completely surrounding Taiwan. And uh, you had Japan kick in this week saying, we're going to try to help guard Taiwan. But China said, basically, we're going to go to war. And you, you got so many of these things happening on so many different fronts that it literally shows you what world war would look like. And we're on the edge of that. But we don't have to fear. That's the first seal that happens during, during the tribulation is uh, the, the first one is the Antichrist. Second one's world war. After that, it's hyperinflation. I mean, you have everything set up for that seven-year period when we're not going to be here. So how blessed are we that the rapture of the church is coming? And we preach that not as an escape theology, but a hustle theology. All these things happening with all these nations are to get us to go, okay, we've got to go for it. Jesus is just about to come. Especially when you see all the stuff on the Temple Mount, all the stuff with Iran, all the stuff with Russia, all the stuff with Syria. You had the U.S. do an airstrike in Syria this last week. Killed 30-some-odd members of ISIS. So... It's, it's, uh, it's really set up for us to see we're about to see the king face to face. So we always go back to the word, though, with all these things happening that are, I mean, you had 600 Hamas terrorists uh, surrender just the other day. I mean, it's crazy. So with all that happening, we always go back to the scripture. The Bible says in Luke 21, 24, when you see Jerusalem won back and you see Israel made a nation in 1948, that generation of people won't pass away till all is fulfilled. So we're blessed and privileged to be able to see these things come to pass. But after that, though, you've got tons of really big, 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 huge signs. You have, you have Israel's language restored, the Hebrew language restored, you have the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got the revival of the Roman Empire. I mean, you had this week, you had Macron offer $100 million in aid to Lebanon. Then Italy and Germany followed with about $30 million. So you, you have that revival, that Roman Empire, a platform for the Antichrist. I mean, it's pretty remarkable the things that were written in that building. They're all about we'll be our own gods and we don't need God. And it's fragmented exactly like the Tower of Babel was. So you had Russia rebuild the archway for Baal worship there in Palmyra. That's where the Tower of Babel was. The Talmud says that's the last line you'll see before the Messiah comes. You had foxes start coming up on the Temple Mount. You had fish in the Dead Sea. You had the Dead Sea turn blood red where Sodom and Gomorrah was on the Day of Atonement. That freaked me out because I talked about it for a couple of weeks and didn't even know it was on the Day of Atonement. I'm like, oh my gosh. So wild. And I forgot to tell you, go to Jimmy Evans' uh, tipping point. We came, our, our interview came out today. So go back to that and see that on YouTube. Going back to what's happened with Israel, you have all of this stuff that happens, exactly what the Bible says you see. It should, it should really preach to us. It's not similar to what the Bible preaches. It's exactly what God said would happen just before the Messiah comes. So you go through all of them. Men will be lovers themselves. You have selfie sticks. You had Bishop uh, Malachi see, have a vision of every pope that was on the earth. 114 popes got their coat of arms correctly, 114 out of 114. That's pretty amazing. The History Channel said that's statistically impossible. Only a God can do that. Well, thank God our fathers, uh, our dad and our God, and he told us these things would happen. And look, we see them happening right in front of us. The Pope that we have now is the 114th Pope. So that's remarkable. So we have all of these things pointing to the coming of the Lord. You have many more signs. Men will be lovers themselves. You have selfie sticks. Uh, the Temple Mount Institute, you have it ready, start having sacrifices. They have the menorah sitting right outside. They have what we talked about the other day, uh, the, earlier in Shiloh. They have the red heifers right there across the valley, the Kidron Valley. Everything's in position. You've got fish in position. You've got the cows in position. You've got 172 different species of predatory birds are showing up in the land. So you have the cleanup crew in the land. So you have all these animals in place. So what's the church going to do? The church is going to see the finish line and accelerate. Let's get as many people born again as we possibly can. So we look at these and they're not an escape thought pattern. It's an absolutely let's go for it. This is the very end. This is the last lap. Many, 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 many more signs, about 80. But we go to signals now and you have blood red moons. You had four blood red moons in a row on Passover and Tabernacles. NASA calls that a tetrad. When's the last time you had four in a row on Passover and Tabernacles? The heavens are going, I died for you, coming back. Died for you, coming back. When's the last time you had that? 1967 when Jerusalem was won back. 
1948 when Israel was made a nation. 1492 at the Edict of Expulsion when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. And God sent Columbus to sail the ocean blue in 1492. And what did he find? He found a safe harbor for the Jews, America. So you've got Iran getting ready to hit Israel again. You have all these signs and signals. You had Bethlehem star. We don't hear that very much, but you had Jupiter, Regulus, and Venus come together at the birth of Jesus. The constellation was Virgo. Remarkable. If we got into all the stuff that happened just in 2017 about eclipses and, and signs in the heavens, I told the Lord, I said, if you don't come back this year, you missed a wonderful opportunity. But you have those uh, those uh, Bethlehem star things, and you, the, the end of it was you had all three of those planets come together right here just recently. First time in 2,000 years. What was it? It was The constellation was Leo. So at the beginning it was Virgo, then it was Leo. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. So the king is coming back to the earth. And what God said would happen just before he comes, you're visualizing it and seeing it right in front of your eyes. Think about it. For every one verse there is about the first coming of the Lord, eight times more about the second coming. So the documentation in Daniel, documentation in Revelation, you're physically seeing a, a, the Bible come alive right before he comes. Wow, we're about to see the king, the author of life, the one that died for us, God raised from the dead, and he's coming back again. Every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What a season that we get to be raptured. We get to come back with him on white horses. And every, every person on the earth is going to see that radiance in Jesus' face because he's God. He created everything. Wow, we're about to see him. Wake up your neighbor, thump your dog, do whatever you need to do. Uh, get, get rocking for Jesus. Help your local church, help your local pastor. Get the will of God wrought in a short period of time. We'll come back next week and we'll see what all Israel's done, what's happened. Many more things are to happen right here before we leave the planet. So have a great, wonderful week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today at the End of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.